So, uh, hey everyone, how's it going? Just wanted to show a little behind the scenes on this shot that I did. It took all day yesterday to set up, so I hope you appreciate it. It's only about a minute long. Some of you may not have noticed it, but uh, I love doing stuff like this. So I thought I would just give you a little rundown on how I did the shot. Yeah. So for starters, um, I've been using this robot arm that I'm borrowing from a friend because uh, why not? I've been using it for a lot of shots because it's cool and I like doing that kind of stuff. So I 3D printed this end effector here that goes on the last joint. It holds my phone and I've been actually doing a lot of shots with my phone which I don't normally do and they've been turning out really nice. Um, yeah, so obviously there's a couple of stations here and the camera arm kind of goes through them all so it's kind of like a big long sequence and I was kind of tying in. Basically I had to tie in like three different shots and well two shots and a voiceover and all sync together and it worked out. I mean I just was kind of trying to figure it out in my head but uh, let me give you like a rundown of everything that was going on and how I did it. So you've seen this before. This is kind of like the brains. We don't really know what's going on with this uh, in that universe or whatever you want to call it, timeline. But this uh, is running a Raspberry Pi and it's also controlling this display. But know if you know anything about Raspberry Pis, um, it's uh, it's kind of difficult to do two display type things. You'd think it'd be easy like if you're using a, a Windows or a Mac or something that you could just run a video on one and have stuff be okay on the other. I did get it to work eventually because there was some OpenGL setting which maybe I'll go over. But it's running a video on here and then it's also running something called Cool Retro Term which makes it look really cool. Obviously that's important. And then uh, the camera swings around and well it pans out from here, looks at the pie, comes around, looks at this mess, which is really hard to read when, uh, when all the lights are on, but it looks cool. And there's some, maybe some Easter eggs hidden in there. We won't talk about that. Then it comes around here and some uh, notable items you've seen from other videos. I should talk about this in one of these videos. Maybe I'll do that. And then the, uh, the main feature, which you can see when you watch the other video. So let's go through everything and how everything works. Start with the Pi. So when I'm doing stuff on a Raspberry Pi and it's connected to the network and it has displays, I like to VNC into it because it's much easier just to use your main computer. And then it's, I don't know, you can search things and you're not dealing with searching things on a tiny Pi screen when you're trying to figure out how to program something. So I've got, uh, I've got a script that's really, really basic. Let's bring it up here. Um, what's it called? Outro. Yeah. So I've got a script that basically just makes it look like the Pi is typing characters so that as I'm talking, it's like part of the scene that uh, it's writing to something. And you don't know what that is yet. I don't know what that is yet. The, we're trying to figure that out, actually. So, um, that version of whoever is uh, that mysterious person is trying to figure this out. It just writes a character for each time and I can just manually enter them in. So I just run this script. But before I run this script, I will run the video. So the video will run on here and when it gets to a certain, there's a little thing that I can see in this that no one else will notice, and then I'll run this, and then I will run the robot. So it's like a three-step sequence that I'm doing all by myself. So let's uh, turn the robot on, and we'll run through the sequence and just see how it looks, because it's fun. The robot's got a kind of a loud fan on it, but that's okay. You can still hear me.
Let's get the scene all set up with the lighting the way I had it before. Because it's much cooler with cool lighting. So that's booting up. We can go over to the Pi. Um, on the Pi, let's have a keyboard here as well. We'll just control X out of this. Wait, where am I? Let's jump into cool retro term. Now we have this uh, cool terminal here that just behaves like a terminal. But it is, look, looks like a, an older screen. So this is where we're going to run the script. This is where we're going to run the video. And this is where we're going to film it. Let's do a run through. Let's actually turn the lights back on. It be as crazy with the lighting here. So this is what's called a cobot. I think that's like the official name that they're calling them now. Uh, it's like a collaborative robot. It can kind of do things that humans can do. It's a little bit safer to be around, but it could still definitely smash your face in if you're not careful. Uh, it's got a lot of strength, but it'll also detect when it hits something. I think that's one of the benefits. But it has this cool button here, and one of the ideas is that uh, you don't have to program everything, you know, you don't have to use the controls to move it around. You can actually hold this button partially, partially in, and then it kind of relaxes and detects that you're pushing on it, and uh, will move around. So you can like move the different joints. Which is pretty cool. I mean, it's kind of a pain in some things, like this is really hard to turn. I'm sure there's settings I can change, but I've already got all the points programmed in. So this is showing where it is. Uh, then you can change like where you're referencing the coordinates. So if you do the base, then the base is just gonna have the, like everything's gonna be referenced to this base here, uh, which kind of makes sense. But then if you're trying to move, say, cause it's a camera, the camera's right on the flange center, so if you uh, want to do like the Z rotating, you can see it's uh, rotating the camera. It's actually not, it's actually not perfectly centered, but uh, that's okay. Let me go back here, and you've got, let's see, program, I've made a bunch of them, so uh, what's the end, what was it, outro? Yes, load that. Pretty intuitive system, but um, I think if you're programming with Python or something, you can do a lot more. Uh, so I've got, what is it, nine points or ten points? So you can see if I select the first one and then uh, tell it to go there. The first point is right up against that. But because I'm doing a spline, so that's what these points are all doing. They're, they're creating a spline, so there's actually some, <coughs> I don't know what you call it, interpolation or something between each point. So, and it's kind of hard to see them. It's not like if you're using a CAD program. So if we go to the next point, I should probably not use my manual lens for this, but whatever. So if we go to the next point, you can see it's just a little bit back because I kind of wanted a straight motion. I'm going through the points now. See, so it's coming over and then it's looking at the screen. It's going over here, I'm doing some like interpolation just so it's more of a smooth motion. And it goes over and it's looking at that. And then it is still looking at that. Coming over, looking at some of the cool things that we've collected from the other, yeah, timelines, whatever you want to call them. And it comes over and it looks at the spinning top. 
So it's just that sequence, just as simple as that. But you see that last movement, I'm doing a linear movement from each point. So that's a linear movement from the center here to each point. But if we go back, again, we'll do a linear. So it's kind of easier to determine where the robot's gonna end up. And it's doing all this inverse kinematics equation to uh, move it around. But if we run the actual one, let me slow it down here you'll see that it kind of moves around a little bit differently. Let's do it. So it's kind of got a, a wiggle there because um, it's not doing a perfectly straight line because of this tight turn. You kind of have to imagine what it's doing, but it comes over, looks at it nice and slow. And it was getting a bit of jitter, but because this is YouTube, I don't really care if you're doing like a, I don't know, huge production with large budget, you wouldn't get away with the kind of vibrations I was getting with this. I'm sure you could figure that out. And it comes over and this, this is the best part because I had like literally millimeters to the phone when it came down here and it was so close to hitting that. And I think I got this in the second shot, which is amazing because if I don't get it right away, then, then I'll have like trouble determining what, uh, what a good shot is. So I got on the second one, which was basically, the first one was like definitely not good. It was okay, but I was missing some stuff. So I was really happy about that. I didn't have to like agonize over it. I got it, it's in the cut now and I'm happy with it. So I'm definitely going to do some cool stuff with this robot. Um, one of the things it's partially set up to do is weld. And I actually have a few welding projects. So that will be cool. And uh, But I really like filming with it. And it kind of makes sense. I kind of want two so that I can use this to film with. And then have the other one on the video, but uh, I mean, I don't even have this one, so they're kind of expensive. I don't see myself actually getting one, just borrowing them for the time being. Yeah, so that's how this shot went, and uh, let me know what you thought of the video, and if you noticed it, or if not, and definitely go check it out, um, because I just like doing this stuff. I've realized that uh, the actual project is only maybe 50% of the video. I'm really getting involved with the story and telling the story. And, um, and that's not surprising to me. I've always liked making cool videos. And like making cool stuff can only go so far when you're just watching it. Um, if I was able to like build and sell and I don't know, everyone was able to experience it in the physical world, then that'd be different. But because I'm making a video about it, I want the story to be interesting too. And who knows where it's going? I don't even know where it's going. We're just gonna have to wait and see, I guess. Oh, one more thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this thing. So I'm gonna have a whole bunch of these and I'm gonna sell them. So if you want to support the channel and get something out of it, I'm going to physically make these on the lathe. And I've got a pricing system that uh, is to kind of limit how many I'll have to make because I don't want to just make them forever. So basically what happens is every, so if they cost a dollar, then there's going to be 10 of them for a dollar and that's the price you're going to start at and then the price is going to double after that 10 it's going to go to two dollars so there'll be 20 of those and then four dollars will be 40 of those and so on 
And I'm sure at some point, probably around the 32 or the 64, this will be 320 $32 ones, that people won't think it's worth it. And that's the idea. I mean, there might be some people that are willing to pay 128 or $256, but you probably won't ever get to those levels. I mean, hopefully, because I don't want to be making thousands of these things. So that's the plan. There's a link to the store down below, so go check it out. Yeah, anyways, see ya.